Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my course uh, aspects of biochemical engineering. So last two lectures I tried to discuss about the stoichiometry of bioprocess. Now uh, this will be, uh, I will be uh, completing this stoichiometric bioprocess by this lecture and um, here I shall discuss two other problems uh, and uh, I hope uh, uh, that you know this uh, will clear all the uh, uh, that whatever uh, problem that we will be having in the stoichiometry then I request all of you to to do uh, this uh, stoichiometry of this equation by as your own so that you practice it and if you have any problem please let me know. Now uh, first problem that I am going to discuss in this lecture this is the anaerobic digestion process as you know the anaerobic digestion process is largely uh, in op operation in India and throughout the world particularly anaerobic digestion process you know, because if you, if you look the history of the wastewater treatment processes like this that the initially that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, all the wastewater treatment processes we considered this kind of wastage for the in the industry and why we have this wastewater treatment processes the reason is that no industry particularly chemical and biochemical industry they cannot discharge their wastewater directly to the water courses because as soon as they uh, they discharge the um, this to the water courses that water will be polluted a lot of bacteria will grow in the water and pollute our drinking water sources and it will be give it is a serious concern so uh, we shall have to treat the uh, organic waste now uh, it has been observed for the, all the industry that 10 percent of the total investment they keep for the wastewater treatment processes. Now initially uh, this, uh, this uh, I told you that 70 percent of this uh, wastewater treatment processes are controlled by the biological means and 30 percent maybe through chemicals and other means. So now uh, this process when you go for the wastewater treatment process initially we thought that uh, it, uh, it is a kind of wastage of money. Now due to the, uh, due to the development of the anaerobic digestion process it is now possible that a part of the money that uh, you spend for wastewater treatment process can be recovered. I can give a, a typical example that in West Bengal we have IFB agro industry they produce the ethanol uh, from uh, broken rice. Uh, and um, they have the anaerobic uh, uh, the treatment process and they told me the 50 percent of their distillation cost, distillation energy recovery is uh, taken care by the anaerobic digestion process that is methane that is produced by this process. Now the problem that I am going to discuss now, this is the anaerobic digestion uh, process and uh, this now problem is like this that uh, elemental analysis of refuse contain 76 percent weight by weight that is the uh, of organic matter. And actually uh, we might you might be aware that organic matter only participate in the biochemical reaction mostly and inorganic matter also can participate that is used as a cofactor for different enzymatic reactions that is the only thing that we have. Now this uh, empirical formula of the refuse is given here. And remaining 24 percent is the as, as is kind of metal oxide, and, and the minimum methane uh, for production through the anaerobic digestion is to be calculated per kg of refuse, and also determine the stoichiometry of the of the process. So you know that uh, the uh, I hope uh, the idea is very clear that uh, some organic waste is there. We putting it into the anaerobic digestion process, and we want to produce the methane. So uh, we shall have to find out that uh, that what is the what is the, how much uh, methane we can produce out of that, and not only that we shall have to also produce uh, find out 
what is the stoichiometry of this process. Now, for, for doing so, uh, question comes what is the basic equation of this. So, you can basic equation will be this, uh, this is the substrate that we know that is already given here that is C H 2.1 O 0.9 and N uh, 0.15. The, this is uh, this uh, plus water molecule, this is not given here, maybe this should be given here. This is, uh, this is because I told you that waste material comprises of you know that uh, lot of uh, polymeric material like starch, glucose, uh, kind of protein. So, you know this, uh, this undergo hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means the reaction which is take place in presence of water when a hydrolysis then it forms the smaller molecules and these smaller molecules then participate in the reaction and produce methane, carbon dioxide, ammonia and um, H ion that is produced. So, we shall have to develop the stoichiometric equation on the basis of that. So, uh, so that is the that that is the uh, that is the whole thing that when you do the analysis of anaerobic digestion process, the preliminary concept on the uh, process is very much required. Until unless we have the uh, conception of the process, we cannot write the stoichiometric of the equation. The conception, I mean, that uh, what are the uh, initial requirement of the process? What is the final desired product we are going to get. If you have some idea then and only then you can write the tentative equation. And then you know, whatever coefficient is there we can, we can fill it up one after another I can show you. Now this is the this is the this is the tentative uh, the reaction that we have in the anaerobic digestion process. And uh, as you know that uh, anaerobic digestion process is usually carried out by two group of microflora one is acidogens and methanogens. Acidogens means that you know that uh, convert the organic matter to the uh, organic acid, volatile fatty acid, and volatile fatty acid will be converted to the uh, to methane and carbon dioxide. Now, though this is the ultimate equation that we have here. Now here we can find out uh, the uh, the uh, uh, that uh, uh, sigma s and gamma gamma s we can we can find out and sigma p and gamma p we can we can easily calculate on the basis of this uh, that the empirical relationship we can find out that. Now uh, <coughs> this anaerobic digestion process uh, what we have we know this uh, that thermodynamic coefficient is 0.7 I, we, I, I have already mentioned. So, if we and here in this stoichiometric equation uh, we have seen that uh, in this stoichiometric equation we have seen that in the stoichiometric equation we have seen only product this product we have not we have not considered This is the this is the product we have considered, but we didn't consider any cell mass yet. Cell mass because the anaerobic anaerobic fermentation process, cell mass production we can appears to be negligible. It is one tenth as that of anaerobic, aerobic fermentation process. So this we neglected. <coughs> Now, uh, uh, that, now uh, that uh, so y p by s is equal to epsilon p sigma s gamma s sigma p gamma p. So in this, the all coefficient is given here, and uh, so if we solve this equation, it is coming about 0 0.1 0 0.78 gram of methane produced from gamma of substrate. So this uh, this way we can uh, we can we can find it out. Now. Uh, now here the gram of substrate when you consider this is the organic uh, substrate, but uh, this uh, again comprises of 76 percent uh, we have seen the refuse contains 76 percent organic matter. So but if you if you yeah, in, if you consider actual refuse actual biomass then what you have to do we shall have to multiply it by 0.76 because 76 
76 percent is the organic matter present in the biomass. So, if you multiply 0 0.6, then we find out gram of refuse that the, this much of gram of methane produced per gram of refuse. Now, previously it was per gram of uh, methane produced per gram of substrate. Now, we can calculate it the per gram of refuse. So, this is coming at, this has come at 0.3, uh, 0 0.134 gram methane per gram of refuse. And then, uh, then uh, uh, how you can calculate the uh, stoichiometry of this uh, process? We can, we can do it very easily. That uh, um, uh, if you, if you, if we, if we know this, we can find out. Uh, we we know the what is the molecular weight of methane and what is the molecular weight of uh, bio, 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 biomass. So, so from that we can we can find out if you look at our coefficient. This uh, we have what we have found out. We have found out how much uh, how much B is produced. We can we can easily calculate B value. We can easily calculate if you know uh, how much B value is produced, then we can easily calculate the carbon dioxide because if you do the carbon balance, one C one equal to B into B plus C. Am I right? So if you know the if we uh, if this uh, we know this is one and this is B value we calculated. So, you can easily calculate the value of C. So, this is how you can find out the So, we can we can calculate the value of C here. Value of C you can calculate this is coming like this. Then we can we do the nitrogen balance, oxygen balance, hydrogen balance. We go I, as I, as I mentioned in the uh, previous lecture that we simple the um, the kind of uh, the balance equation that we if we if we, if we, do, we if we do that we can easily solve this equation that uh, this is like this this is coming like this you can solve all this uh, all all this coefficient we can easily calculate. Now, when you have all the coefficient, then we can put this equation that we have already written previously. This uh, equation will come. So, this will give you the total idea that uh, uh, what is the stoichiometry of this process. Now, here I want to add something else. Suppose uh, this is the uh, molecular conversion. Am I right? This is like this. If you if you if you like 0.33 gram atom methane per gram atom refuse. Am I right? Now, we know the what is the atomic weight of this and we know what is the molecular weight of this. This molecular weight and this molecular weight. Know. So, we multiply by that. We can, we can, we can multiply. Then we will get the gram of methane produced per gram of Gamma of substrate. You can, you can from that you can you can do that. Now, uh, now let me let me show you something else here. Now suppose you 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 guess uh, this much of methane produced. So uh, you can you can uh, you can find out point point three three moles of methane. Am I right? So uh, now. Uh, we know at NTP, into what is NTP? NTP is normal temperature and pressure. What is the normal temperature is pressure? Temperature is 0 degree centigrade and pressure is 1 atmospheric pressure. That at NTP, 1 mole of any gas, this is the, what is the volume that we have? 22.4 liter. Am I right? So, if you know this much of moles, so if you if you multiply it by so 22.4 into 0.33, then this liter of methane will be produced per gram atom of this uh, the refuse. 
So, uh, now if you divide by molecular weight of this uh, refuse, then you can find out the per gram of uh, refuse how much uh, methane is produced that you can easily calculate. The okay. Now, let me go to the next problem. Mm, next problem is very interesting. If you look at here, the microorganism Microbacterium vacci is able to grow with ethane as a sole source of carbon and energy. Now, here I want to point out one thing that you know that uh, uh, I, 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 I discussed the single cell protein uh, 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 may be considered as a very, uh, very good source for the animal feed and uh, it is not very good for the human food. The reason is that it contains lot of nucleic acid and due to presence of nucleic acid, it causes gout and kidney stones. So, uh, so uh, there, there, is a, um, there is a trend in the world that how, how we can uh, produce the uh, microbial proteins. So, different uh, country, they are producing microbial protein from the different sources. Now, in our country, we have uh, very less uh, petroleum reserve. We have hardly, we have uh, whatever petroleum reserve we have, mostly it is be consumed uh, and only for uh, 30 years. Not more. That is why most of the crude petroleum we import from outside. Now, uh, now in the, in the petroleum produ producing country, they, they have a lot of petroleum. They can use the hydrocarbons for the production of cell mass. So, this is the problem related to that. Now, uh, they use the ethane as a source of carbon. Ethane is kind of hydrocarbons eh? that uh, this is used as a for the product production of mycobacterium. It grows at 30 degree centigrade in a CSTR chemostat with a continuous supply of gas, 5 percent uh, ethane and 95 percent air and of a sterile aqueous media which contain various minerals, nitrogen as ammonium sulphate and uh, limited uh, the substrate in uh, is ethane. What is mean by limited substrate? Limited substrate which is the, uh, what constant, what, uh, what is the component uh, uh, that present in the limited amount? As uh, since ethanol, ethane, ethane is a hydrocarbon, is sparingly soluble in, uh, in uh, water and you know that microorganism can utilize the, the substrate which is soluble in water. They cannot take the substrate which is, uh, which is insoluble. So, it is first it is to be solubilized. The solubility, since the solubility of ethane is very less, so that is why the, uh, the, the ethane solubility uh, is a limiting factor in this particular reactions. And yield coefficient, this is very important, yield coefficient is 23.7 gram cell per mole of ethane that is uh, that is given there. Now, except for the small amount, except for the small amount sulfur and phosphorus, an analysis of dry mass carbon content is 47.4 percent weight percent. Weight percent means weight by weight. That means if you take the 100 gram, basis is 100 gram, then carbon content in the biomass is 47.4 gram. The nitrogen 8.3 gram, hydrogen is 7.43 7 gram, ash is 4 gram. The remaining, uh, remainder is taken as the oxygen, which cannot be detected in the analysis. It is very difficult to find out oxygen present in the substrate. Determination of the stoichiometric formula of the as free biomass is A, H, A, O, B and N, C and the formula weight per gram, gram atom carbon that uh, and determined Y, X by S in the unit carbon mole biomass per carbon mole ethane. Now, now you, can, you can remember that uh, previously what is given? This, this, uh, in this problem that is given, this is like this. The gram of cell mass, 23.7 gram of cell mass produced per gram of ethane. So, this you have to calculate the gram atom 
of the cell must produce part of gamma atom of ethane that we shall have to uh, we, shall, we shall have to find it out. This is the this is the equation that we have gamma mole biomass per gram. This is then again we shall have to calculate the oxygen consumption that the gram molecular oxygen per gram mole of biomass formation and when it is uh, as you consume it is assumed that carbon dioxide is the only product besides the biomass and write the full stoichiometric equation and determine the total heat evolved per kg of dry cell mass formation so this is this is very interesting interesting in the sense that that uh, that uh, here you you get the opportunity to find out how how to determine the uh, empirical formula of the biomass and then you have to calculate that uh, carbon mole biomass produced per carbon mole uh, ethane consumed then you can then you calculate the what is the oxygen consumed then followed by the stoichiometry of the whole process and finally you have to find out the how much heat evolved in this process now so uh, how you are uh, how you are going to solve this this is very interesting that uh, so uh, suppose uh, uh, that you know that uh, in this uh, that you know if you look at the biomass you look the biomass so we have carbon am i right carbon is 47% 47.4 this is basis is the uh, basis is 100 gram basis is 100 gram biomass if 100 gram biomass carbon present is 47 nitrogen is uh, 8.3 this is all gram and then we have hydrogen this is 7.43 gram and as is about 4 grams. Now, remaining whatever after summation all these things whatever remaining that will be oxygen, remaining is the oxygen. So, uh, what do you what do you want to point to and it contains about 4 percent as. So, uh, when you when you do the, uh, the stoichiometric analysis we do the stoichiometric analysis with the re respect to the organic substrate. So, naturally that uh, this is to be converted to the uh, 100 gram of not by 100 gram of organic material. So, if you want to have uh, convert to 100 gram of organic material then with that carbon content it will divide by we can we can point 96 that 4 percent is there that you convert 100 percent of biomass. So, this is also 0 0.96 this is also 0 0.96 and so we can, we can do that this also 0 0.96. Now, when you get this carbon, you know that what is the atomic weight of carbon is 12, nitrogen is how much 14, hydrogen is 1, oxygen is how much 16. So, you know that. So, if, if you can you can you can do the analysis carbon, hydrogen, oxygen we can find. Then, so you we shall have to find out the biomass empirical formula on the basis of 1 gram atom carbon. Am I right? 1 gram atom carbon. So, how much carbon atom is there? This is divided by 12. Now, this you have to divide with this, 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 all these things you divide. Then you can find out per gram atom of carbon how much nitrogen is there, how much hydrogen is there, how much oxygen is there. Now, if you have this, then you can put it in the equation like this. This is C H O N. So, we we can we can we can we can we can, we can write the different figures as well. This is one, but this will be different. This we can write it here. So we can we can have the empirical formula like this, and then we can find out the molecular weight of this particular formula. So this is exactly what he has it has done here. You.
this is what exactly we have done it here this is the this is the figure that we have and then we have find out like this this has come like this now now we we got the formula like this this is the this is the formula we got and with the molecular weight this now well, we have only this figure 23.7 if you divide by 24 point this molecular weight then we will get the gram mole biomass per gram mole of ethane now since it contains about 4% of as so you multiply it by this to get the exact figure what should be the um, uh, figure of gram mole of biomass per gram mole of ethane that you can easily find it out. Now next question is that how we can find out the, the oxygen requirement of the system. So again uh, in this system first we shall have to uh, find out that what is the tentative stoichiometric equation. So this is the ethane this is a gram atom ethane this is usually the formula is C ethane formula is to C2A6 the gram atom will be CH3 and then ammonia is required here cell mass is produced and this is oxygen is required this is aerobic process this is the cell mass and this is carbon dioxide and this is water this is the what we but we have the equation and from that we can we can uh, we can we can find out different uh, coefficient this is substrate this is the cell mass that we we can we can we can uh, develop the uh, gamma s value see gamma b value you can calculate and from that you can you can also uh, determine this uh, b value because the yc value already you calculated the gram moles of of, of uh, uh, the biomass produced per gram of ethan ethan form so if you if you know that you can you can put this equation here and this is coming about uh, 1.236 uh, uh, that is moles of oxygen per gram atom of ethane. Now uh, then we can also calculate the YOC that is uh, this uh, I can show you. OX, OX means gram of oxygen required gram of cell mass am i right so i can i can write like this this is the group y o by s and y x by s so we can we can easily do that because if you this ss will cancel so this is exactly what is uh, shown here what is shown here so you, you, can, you, can, you can do that and then we if you do the uh, the balance carbon balance uh, and nitrogen balance oxygen balance oxy oxygen already we have calculated we find this stoichiometric equation this stoichiometric equation you can calculate then we can heat evolve we can find out like this for uh, for uh, for q for this is 4 q0 into uh, b b already we calculated so we can find out this is kilojoule per mole of substrate consumed and then i told you if you divide with the molecular weight you find out that how much uh, for a gra per gram of uh, cell mass uh, how per gram of substrate how ca can it produce then you divide by the y x by s if you divide by y x by s that the gram of cell pr produced per gram of substrate consumed then you find out for per gram of uh, the cell mass how much how much heat is evolved so this is how you can calculate that uh, the total uh, heat evolved in this process and uh, so in conclusion i want to uh, tell you that uh, in the stoichiometry of the biochemical process we, we um, it can be done very easily first we shall we shall have to know the uh, the different empirical formulas of the substrate we should know the empirical formula of the biomass we should know the empirical formula of the product 
and uh, the empirical formula can be well is easily defined we can the carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen we can assume that it is present there and then uh, we can through the empirical analysis we can easily find out if you know the elemental composition of this material we can easily find out the empirical formula once you know this empirical formula then um, we can we can we can write the different coefficient that is we required in this particular equation and when you write any kind of biochemical equation we should have the some preliminary idea on the biochemical process whether we are targeting for the cell mass formation whether you are targeting for the product formation uh, whether the uh, process is aerobic or anaerobic all this information if, uh, if it is there then on the basis of that we can write the stoichiometric equation and also i showed you that um, how you can find out the validity of the experiment results and also the amount of heat evolved in the process uh, i hope this will be uh, very much useful for do the mass and energy analysis of any kind of biochemical process thank you very much